This is a 7 News update. I'm Juan Fernandez live in the 7 Newsplex. 13 rafters are on a Coast Guard cutter apparently headed for Cuba. The first rafters being returned as part of a new deal between the U.S. and Cuba. And a 21-year-old woman is reunited with her mother 18 years after she was kidnapped by her father. These stories and much more at 10. And I'm Juan Fernandez live at the National Satellite News Center where we're expecting the first pictures out of Pittsburgh this morning. Plus, in a few minutes, U.S. Air will be holding a news conference. So you live in Hialeah. You place an emergency 911 phone call. Your house is on fire. Well, you may run into some trouble because here at Station 6 on West 25th Street, there's nobody home. And I team's Juan Fernandez is working this one from the National Satellite News Center tonight. Juan? Rob, the man under the eye of suspicion in the disappearance of Shannon Melendi is speaking out through his lawyers tonight. Riding a jet ski is much like driving a car. There are certain rules you need to follow. And I'm Juan Fernandez live at Bayfront Park, Lollapalooza, kicking off its fourth hour. The concert is sold out, but we've got special backstage passes. We'll take you inside next. When paramedics arrived, they couldn't get to Johnny any quicker. They had to use a pair of bolt cutters to cut through this lock and chain. And by the time they got his body out of the water, it was too late. During the past couple of days, we've had an incredible amount of rain. And to prevent these sensitive areas from flooding out, these floodgates have been opened to help redistribute the rising water. This is Juan Unit 8. We've got the material girl in sight. Hey, Madonna, any New Year's resolution, Madonna? Do you have a second for us? Did you get my Christmas card? Perhaps the biggest culprit are the people who get rid of their cigarettes the old-fashioned way, out the car window. Now, once a cigarette hits the dry grass and the debris, it only takes seconds for a fire to ignite. I'm Juan Fernandez, live in Hallandale, coming up at 6. We'll have the very latest on this weekend's wicked weather. We'll take you to this mobile home park flooded out by the rains. Again, that story is coming up at 6, so don't go away. Now, the break in this line poses no real threat. According to these workers, it's all part of routine maintenance. The leak is easy to find and even easier to repair. Juan Fernandez, who is standing by live on the beach with the very latest. Juan? Well, John, you can really feel the fury of Mother Nature here, and a good example is a freighter that you might not be able to see now. The winds and the rains have really picked up incredibly here. The second flotilla to Cuba has officially been aborted. Seven News was there live. We only promise that his death has not been in vain. For stories that affect us all in South Florida. Everyone was saying that if they had the chance to do it again, they would do it. Keep watching Seven News. I don't know about you folks, but I'm ready for the Super Bowl. I have my official Super Bowl t-shirt and I've got my official Super Bowl seat. Except my seat is in the middle of a parking lot. One. Craig, it is one tough assignment. We just had an opportunity to go through the haunted house. It is spine tingling. It is heart stopping. Juan Fernandez now monitoring all the happenings coming in off our satellites from Los Angeles. Of course, we want to know tonight, Juan, any winners at this point? Well, yes, Lynn, the ceremony just got underway about 45 minutes ago, and so far, several awards have been given out in the television category. John Zyle goes to trial in late March. His attorneys are hoping this incident is a difference between life and death when he faces the judge and the jury for the murder of seven-year-old Christina Holt. Cops used Gould's beeper number to contact him. They put the young boy on the phone who told him to meet him back here at the mall. And sure enough, half an hour later, he did. It was four hours after the baby's death that his grandmother and aunt found him. Frantically, they dialed 911, but by that time, it was too late. Now, police are pretty sure they'll be able to find out why this is because the boxes, some of them have been labeled with the people's names or trying to locate the next of kin, the building was going to become a neighborhood community center, a neighborhood church, and also an AIDS information center. So you can imagine quite a surprise to the people who are cleaning up today. Reporting live in Liberty City, I'm Juan Fernandez, 7 News. It's just such a tragic thing that someone so small and so so innocent and so happy should be gone now. So tragic. It's just so tragic. It's that one word they use to describe her death. 18-year-old <laughs> Edvard Almonor shot by another student playing with a loaded gun in the school's parking lot. Family and friends gathering today to say a final goodbye to the young teenager they loved so much now laid to rest in a simple pink casket. Having a gun is not a positive thing. Having a gun doesn't make you a man or anything. It just takes away innocent lives. 
singing drowned out the cries of pain. This week's tragedy hitting home for those closest to Edvard. Her death, they hope, a catalyst for change. When you go to school, leave guns, leave all weapons, just take your brains with you, take the education that is offered. This killing and this violence is just so unnecessary, and it leaves so many people hurting, like we're all hurting now for Edvard. For Edvard's family, nothing can bring her back. Yet today they say they rest a little easier, knowing their little girl is with God. I hope that everyone learns from this and let it be the last. On a routine mission over the Bahamian Islands, brothers to the rescue stumble upon a group of 37 Cuban rafters, all stranded on Quezal, about 40 miles south of Marathon. Uh, when we approached uh, Quezal, uh, we noticed that there was a lot of people there, that they weren't there the day before. But that wasn't all. Scribbled on the sand, they see one desperate mother's cry for help. He spotted a sign on the beach saying, SOS, child in distress. And that did it for us. That's when the founder of the group, Jose Basulto, hopped into his single-engine Cessna and headed south. The plane came in for a picture-perfect landing. The rafters were given food and water. The five-year-old little girl was suffering from dehydration. When we were taking off, after we had reached about uh, three top level, the aircraft was hit by a very strong wind gust. So I lost directional control on the airplane and went into the trees. From another plane, pilot Billy Shoes saw it happen. For a few moments, we thought that there were uh, unconscious, sir. Basulto walked away from the wreckage with a broken finger, but his co-pilot, Arnaldo Iglesias, was not as lucky. Uh, he was pinned down by the aircraft, and that's really when it got scary. Uh, I was not scared until then, because uh, gasoline was flowing out of the wind tanks. Both were rushed to Fisherman's Hospital, Iglesias with a broken leg. This is the fourth accident for Brothers to the Rescue. They take these risks every day. So what makes all this worth it? What makes... Saving lives, saving human lives. That's the most beautiful thing uh, a human being can do. Haitian <laughs> activist Daniel Baran rests in peace tonight, but his people live in sorrow. He didn't have to die for the, the freedom, you know, even though he told him, you know, come down, you know, give up. They're not going to give up. Baran never gave up. He was killed last week, gunned down in front of a friend's house after a meeting. Baran supported Aristide. Miami's Haitian community says his death was politically motivated. He was always fighting for his country. He was always fighting that one day Democrat may restore in Haiti. They expressed their frustration and grief through the streets of Little Haiti, hundreds walking alongside the hurts carrying their beloved Baran. The death of another Haitian freedom fighter is just another harsh reminder that the return of democracy to the island may take longer than what they originally hoped for. He been fight for Haiti just like all of us do. We will stand and fight until they can stop kill Haitian. The procession ended in an emotion-filled service at the Notre Dame DIT church. Baran's wife and children sat quietly, stunned with disbelief. The man they all loved was gone forever. I cannot talk so long because that, that death, you know, affected myself, you know. Hallelujah! In Little Haiti, Juan Fernandez, 7 News. The whole street was all muddy, so you can tell there was a hole there or, or anything in there. But something was there, a 10 by 18 foot sinkhole, large enough to swallow up two cars and the passengers inside. I got stuck and then I tried to put it in reverse and it wouldn't go, and then it just kept sinking and sinking. Water quickly filling the car, seeping in through cracks in the doors. A woman and a small child trapped inside. Seconds after the first car plunged into the sinkhole, two nearby college students rushed to the scene and helped pull a mother and her young daughter out to safety. So we ran out. It was filled with mud. We couldn't even see the ground. And so we opened the door, got the lady out and the daughter. 
As soon as I got it out, the car started slowly sinking more and more and deeper and deeper. We weren't thinking. I wasn't thinking. We were just upset at the fact that everybody was stopping and yeah, staring and at them and they weren't doing we anything. Thinking. They were asking us if we wanted anybody to call them, if we were going to go call someone. The sinkhole firefighters say caused by a ruptured water main underneath the intersection of Bayview Drive and Sunrise Boulevard. The main break sending thousands of gallons of water gushing into the streets. We had a second car that actually went around our engine and plunged into the hole. Those two elderly victims were rescued by our firefighters and pulled to safety. The young women being called heroes, the people they saved grateful. A hug they say not thanks enough for saving their lives. So we were very lucky that a lot of people helped us. So. Work crews will be working round the clock. They hope to have the work completed by sometime this morning, but they are suggesting if you need to come by this area, which is Bayview and Sunrise in Fort Lauderdale, to find an alternate route. In Fort Lauderdale, I'm Juan Fernandez, today in Florida. Madonna, Elton John, Sly Stallone, Miami's own Gloria and Emilio Estefan. All superstars and all in South Florida this weekend. So where will these stellar partiers ring in the new year? We're on Ocean Drive and 11th Street in Miami Beach. This is where the New Year's Eve party will be taking place. It's the home of Italian fashion designer Gianni Versace, and those on his guest list are all among the rich and famous. So 7 News went in search of those lucky enough to be invited. Hi there, I was looking for Madonna. Yeah, who are you? Uh, this is Juan from Channel 7. We were calling to find out uh, what her plans were for the New Year's. Uh, I can't help you, thank you. Sorry, I can't help you, bye. Okay. No, not okay. You give me fever. This is Juan, Unit 8. We've got the material girl in sight. Hey, Madonna. Any New Year's resolution, Madonna? Do you have a second for us? Did you get my Christmas card? Okay, so it's Mum for Madonna. Now it's off to Rocky's million dollar pad just a few doors away. Is this Sly's or is this Sly's? Well, all of it is. All of it's his? Yeah. You know if he's home? Uh, no, he's not. He's not home. Sure, he's not home, but he is expected to make the rounds on Saturday. Is this where the big New Year's Eve party is going to be tomorrow? Maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Do you have Gianni home? Yes, he's going to be home. Do you think he can come out? No, Gianni can't come out, but we can tell you that after dinner at Versace's, the group will take it to the Warsaw Ballroom, where they will party till the wee morning hours. Most of the club now decorated in trademark Versace fare. The party is VIP only, so don't make any plans to be there. Again, tomorrow night's party, totally VIP. Murder, it's supposed to shock and upset us. Yet many are fascinated by it. We see it on TV, in the movies, and now on the walls of art galleries around the country. People are very fascinated with these stories of others, in part because it's a very human thing, but we almost never get to experience it. And now you can, in an exhibit simply titled Murder, 34 artists display what curator John Yao says is a look at life in modern America. Domestic violence is a subject that's been sort of ignored till, you know, maybe in the last few years. And I think that is important. It's from a newspaper report, which is really the, about his grandfather who's been shot and killed for his social security check. This is a piece about murder, and it's about his family. And even more recently, the case of the People versus Simpson, bringing a tale of double murder into our living rooms, a key piece of evidence now synonymous with murder. Gloves will never mean the same thing again to, to this generation of Americans who watched the whole OJ thing on TV. Did he plant the glove? Didn't he plant the glove? Blah, 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 blah. And this glove has entered our conversation. The paintings, sculptures, and photos are not meant to offend, but to provoke thought. The lives of some of the artists, like Andy Warhol and Yoko Ono, at some point were affected by someone's murder. An important point these people say comes through their work. What's common is that murder has affected everyone. I mean, if not personally, throughout your life, JFK was killed, and Jeffrey Dahmer, who his heinous crimes, I and mean, we were all affected by it. Different people have different interpretations of what art is, and, you know, this is a good sample of, I guess, art that revolves around murder. In downtown Miami, Juan Fernandez, 7 News. 7's Juan Fernandez is standing by live right now in Davie with more on this happy ending. Go ahead, Juan.
Rick, we're on McDonald Farm, home to many farm animals and the new home to the missing pony. Now, the two men who allegedly stole the horse were originally charged with animal cruelty. Now the owners have filed grand larceny charges. They want both these guys behind bars. Well, today, as you said, both the owner and the horse were reunited, bringing to an end this bizarre case of the missing pony. The McDonald's have a farm. And on that farm, there was a horse, until yesterday, that is, when one of their prized miniature ponies disappeared. I couldn't believe she was stolen because the fences are all good. The gate has a lock on it, and the lock was still on the gate. So I couldn't even believe that she was gone to start with, let alone when I found out she was stolen, you know. Missing because she had been stuffed in the back seat of this Chevy Malibu. Cramped inside, nowhere to go. We didn't think it was ours when we seen it, but then it was our pony, right? Not my pony. The McDonald's had put Little Bit out to pasture, away from the other animals so the pregnant pony could have her baby. And that's when the two clever thieves allegedly snatched her. Several hours later, cops pulled them over for a busted headlight, only to find the tiny horse in the back seat. You want to hold her? This morning, two-year-old Samantha was reunited with her favorite pony. Samantha rides her, brushes her, and Samantha loves horses. And it's her pony, right? <laughs> Little Bit's owners don't know how the horse was stolen. They tell us the horse is very comfortable with people and was kept near the side of the road. And that may have made Little Bit a lot easy to get. The only thing I could figure out, they had to lift her over the cage. The only way they could have got her out of there. From now on, the McDonald's plan on keeping a watchful eye on the mini mare. I'm going to keep her home. <laughs> I'm not going to let anything happen to her. I plan to protect those seven keep them away from humidity, and shower anyone who needs it because I am shower cap boy. Thank you. Would anyone want to spend 20 weeks living with this man? Oh my God, that's ridiculous. I don't know this man, no. Apparently some people do. MTV Real World hopefuls lining up at Miami's Hard Rock for a shot at living on South Beach with six roommates while the cameras watch it all. And each person has something they say is oh so special. I'm a Jew up, half Jewish, half Italian, I'm, I got a great personality. The hair, what's with the hair? It's different, it's, I have a new hairstyle every week. So over 20 weeks they'll have 20 different hairstyles 20, on the show? 20 different hairstyles. I am crazy, I'm stupid, I have no intelligence, that's why. Farts are always funny, you know, burps, say, hey, I can do it all. Making it onto the real world won't be that easy though. First, you have to show up to a casting call, then fill out a very personal application, and I do mean personal, Take a picture, stand in line, then wait, and wait. Okay, I've cut the line and I've filled out my application. This is where it all boils down to, the interview process. Hey, man, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? What's your name? Good, my name's Juan. Juan, ah, your television reporter. That's right. Interesting. Very interesting. Juan, you're 27 years old. That's right, I'm 27 years old. Sorry, but you don't qualify. This one's a reject, guys. That's right. One thing I forgot to mention is you have to be between the ages of 18 and 26. This season is unlike any other. The seven roommates will be given $50,000 to create and operate their own business. So having some business savvy won't hurt. I have that business background and pretty good leadership skills. I think I can sell myself pretty good. Dating service in Miami. You can do it. Born in Jamaica, lived in England, lived all over America. I'm not looking for stereotypes. Be yourself. That's all really what I'm looking for. So we're going to go inside of you, find out what you're all about, and have a great time with it. The trick is to drink a little glass of wine, red wine. No tricks, just be yourself and not too camera shy. Someone who knows all about it is Carlos Brito. In the spotlight for months after a deadly drag race left him paralyzed two years ago. I mean, it's the only, the only thing that I have to a good future, something that I'm looking forward to, something that I like. We're very excited to be here in Miami. I think this is going to be the best show yet. Juan Fernandez, 7 News.